I tend to have a hard time in the winter. Um, I do tend to suffer from seasonal depression um, and just generalized anxiety uh, altogether, but it just seems like this winter um, things have really kind of caught up with me and um, when I get stressed out it's now starting to cause inflammation in my body so I've actually just not felt the best. I made a video in July um, where I was explaining to you guys how I got some odd like weird sickness um, which I believe was parasitic, like Lyme disease or something like that. Um, and I still tend to uh, have interesting symptoms now and then. Um, I do a lot of natural things, I take a lot of natural things, and I try to eat as healthily as I can to fight inflammation and stuff like that. But I still tend to get um, flare-ups every once in a while of those odd symptoms. So. Um, that's just kind of what's been going on um, and we have a lot of big changes that are happening on our homestead this year which are all very exciting but those changes like they're they're very big um, and that I think has kind of caused me to just like I was overstimulated and then I shut down it's like I got really overstimulated with ideas and stuff like that and then I just like kind of shut down after uh, being very excited for like a couple of weeks that's how things kind of tend to go for me sometimes um, with anything in life I just get really excited and I think that's where a lot of my energy comes from to like build stuff or get ideas or like create things and then after the fact I'm just like dead and then like right after I filmed last week's video where I was talking about the Netherland Dwarfs, um, the Netherland Dwarf Creme d'Argent crosses that we just had, like Ringo and Bobcat had these crossbred kits and I was so excited for it. And during that video, I noticed that Bobcat was not wanting to be touched or not wanting to be held or anything. Um, so I, that's why in that video I compared Ringo's size to Fennec, which is Bobcat's sister, um, cause I didn't want to mess with Bobcat. And then after I was done filming, I messed with Bobcat that night and I flipped her over and I found out that she had like a very angry case of mastitis. She's really, like she's got scabs on like these four nipples at least. She's really, sorry girl, she doesn't want me to touch it. She's really like hard right here and like all the way around. Sorry girly, sorry, do not move. She's got some lumps underneath these ones too. And not so much under that one, but the worst of it is like right here. So I shaved her so I could do like a cold or a warm compress. Um, but yeah. And if you follow me on Instagram, there was a whole like story that I posted like during the weekend of just going to Fort Wayne and just trying to find antibiotics that I could give her because I needed something like penicillin or LA-200 um, to inject her with to help her get over this mastitis. So this morning I'm getting ready to leave and I'm gonna try to find antibiotics somewhere. The problem is that the government passed the thing last, last year or the year before um, where you're not supposed to be able to buy antibiotics like LA-200 or penicillin without veterinary approval. But there are still some places that just have them on the counter. I'm not really sure how. I'll have to make sure that they're not expired. Um, but my hope today is to find something like that. And I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. If I can't, then I really don't see Bobcat making it through this. Um, it is a lot more than a simple case of mastitis at this point. I actually don't know how it got this bad so fast. And I ended up taking the kits off of her and a lot of people were upset that I did that because they said that like I shouldn't be taking kits off of her if she has mastitis, but like the thing is like her, all of her nipples had scabs on the end of them and no milk is coming out and the cysts on her had started hardening. So there was no way that the kits were being fed 
and at that point I just figured the best course of action was to dry her up. And being on social media, um, it's both a curse and a blessing because I've learned so much from so many of like my followers and I've also uh, learned that like there's a lot of opinions out there that I just sometimes they're not they're not coming from a place of like helpfulness um, so it just was very overwhelming to me when I started posting these stories and I got like so many comments and messages about things that I should have done um, or things that I did wrong or you know whatever I did my very best to do what I think I should have done Bobcat is fine I have given her injections. I've given her three and that's all I'm going to do. I gave her uh, one the first day that I found the antibiotic, which it was lucky that I even found the antibiotic in the first place. And then the next day I gave her another one because I was being really aggressive with it um, to begin with because it was just very hard. Um, the infection was really bad. She had stopped eating and it just wasn't good. So I gave her two days of injections and then I gave it a rest for three days and I just gave her her last injection um, yesterday. So um, I actually do think that she is healing. Um, she's eating again and she seems to be gaining a little bit weight back. Um, the cysts are still hardened but they're smaller so I think they're shrinking um, but I'm not entirely sure. and. The thing is, I was just such like an emotional wreck over this whole thing, and I know like I've had a lot of people, not a lot, I guess, I shouldn't say a lot, I've had some people tell me that I'm too soft to be a homesteader and that, you know, I shouldn't have feelings like this, but like Bobcat and I have kind of a special relationship and the fact that like she was part of my project for these Netherlands, so um, the thing is I wanted to make her better, uh, I wanted her to have more kids in the future but also I don't want to be unfair to her um, so it is my rabbitry I make the rules I, I do what I think is best here and the thing is even if she gets better if those cysts don't go away then unfortunately she's going to have to be called anyway because I don't want to breed her knowing that it could happen again so it's one of those situations where like I, I love her enough to like not want her to suffer and also it, it's just it's such a hard situation you guys because it, this is one of the hardest things like to talk about when it comes to homesteading because like all of my animals here are supposed to serve a purpose yes I have you know the bantams and I have the netherland dwarfs um, but all of my creme de argents all of my like Nigerian dwarfs and my cats and my dogs, they all serve a purpose here on my farm. So the thing is, if I can't breed Bobcat anymore after this, then I'll have to make a hard cull. And that's gonna be really hard for me to do, but it is something that I can do and it's something that I've done before. Um, it's just not, it's not fair. Um, but I am trying with the antibiotics and with topical treatments and just you know nutritionally like I'm trying to give her like herbs and stuff like that to like try to try to clear this all out of her body but the reality is if it doesn't go completely away that I'll still have to call her so it's just it's it's sad um, and I don't like necessarily talking about this because I think that I might have a lot of people angry with me um, but at the same time, it is reality. So anyway, that aside, um, I just gave her her last injection yesterday. And now it's just kind of a waiting game to see if that actually goes away. I'm gonna give her a month or so and see like if we have any improvement on those cysts actually going away. Um, and we'll see after that. And uh, yeah, we'll see. But I guess I didn't even explain to you guys, I know I explained it on Instagram, but I actually moved all of her kits off of her. Um, I, I said that when I was talking, but I, I moved all the kits off of her and I was lucky because Chevra, my other doe, only had two kits this go around. So I gave all, of, all 11 of Bobcat's kits to Chevra. Um, and Chevra is the daughter of Cassia. She loves to be a mom and 
I felt kind of bad for her when she only had two babies, but she loves those two babies. And then all of a sudden she ended up with 11 more one day this last, like this last weekend. This is Shebra with all these babies. <laughs> I just flipped the box because I found one out. So um, hers are pretty easy to pick out of the bunch just because they're super chunky because they were only, they were only two in the litter. So uh, I'm hoping that by flipping the box and giving them food and they're now like walking around and stuff, they're gonna start eating on their own pretty good. Hi, Miss Shebra. Hi, pretty lady. What are you doing? Yeah, there's a baby after you, constantly. <laughs> if any of you are worried that Shevra will not feed them, don't be, because she has taken a liking to all of them. And they are all basically like family now, like they're all just like kind of conjoined into like one little 13 bunny family. <laughs> And she just took to them right away. She is such a great mom. So um, yes, they, they foster very, very well. Um, I was really, really impressed um, with Chevra and they're all doing well. We have not lost a single kit, so that's really good. Um, yeah, I'm just really, I'm really impressed with Chev and um, honestly, Bobcat was being a great mom. It just got to the point where she was in pain and she couldn't feed her kids anymore. And I totally understand that. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the updates on the Netherland uh, dwarf cream crosses. <laughs> but yeah, so January has just not been like the funnest month and I've just not really been in it. My head has kind of been fuzzy, just can't think straight. Um, I don't know what's going on, but at the same time I do because it happens every single year. I just need the weather to get nice again. And I'm actually really surprised because today the sun is actually out and I don't think that I've seen the sun in over two weeks. So I was happy that the sun actually came out today. The thing about homesteading is that this is a lot of hard work. Um, the animals do help me a lot because they get me outside. Um, and they help me to keep coming out because they depend on me. So I have to come out at least twice a day to feed them and more, more often than not I come out several times a day to spend time with them um, because they make me happy and they are a form of therapy for me. So um, it is a lot of work to do this. It's worth it, um, but I do definitely get burnt out. And I don't hear that being talked about enough. I don't think um, it's totally normal to feel burnt out um, and overwhelmed and overworked because I've definitely felt that within the last couple of weeks. I feel overwhelmed, overworked, um, just a lot. It's a lot of hard work. You guys haven't seen Mirren in a while. Hi, kitten. Mirren is very big now. Um, so yeah, it is, it's definitely a lot of, of hard work, but worth it. This year, like I said, we've got a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing this year. It's going to involve a lot of labor and time and just, it's exciting. It's exciting stuff that we're going to be doing, but um, it's also going to be very difficult and um, it's going to get stressful. I am admittedly a bit of a stress ball <laughs> when it comes to this type of thing. I have a lot of um, stress and anxiety problems and I do tend to get overwhelmed and I do struggle with a lot of depression and um, just a lot of like a mental health problems but at the same time I I just try to keep pushing through as much as I can and I always come back out on the other side and the world always looks brighter eventually but right now it's just kind of we're not quite there yet. I'm getting there, um, but we're not quite there yet. There are so many things that you can do to try to eliminate stress and anxiety and all of that, but the thing is, it's a human thing to feel and experience, so sometimes no matter what you do, you'll still go through seasons like this. Um, and that's one thing I had to learn when I had first started like really getting into the homesteading thing and really eating healthy is I thought I could fix all of my problems with diet and lifestyle and all of that. Um, but the thing is, like, I still struggle with different things like, you know, 
like what I've just talked about. So you're not always going to feel happy or motivated or like you've got this. Um, and maybe this is just like, maybe if anything, this video will help you if you're feeling like that and you're thinking like, wow, am I the only one feeling like this? You're not. Um, winter is really hard for me. I want to be more motivated. I want to do more things, but it's so hard to convince myself sometimes to get out and do the things. So it is normal. It will pass. It always does. Being on YouTube is really hard because sometimes even when I don't want to film, I still have to. Um, but I think that even though, you know, today necessarily I'm not really feeling creative, I'm not really feeling like taking those pretty shots. Um, I think that it's still helpful to show you guys this side of homesteading where it's just like sometimes you just do chores and you go back in and you don't do anything else. And you don't have to feel guilty about it. Um, winter is hard for a lot of people and it's hard for me, I know that. Um, so yeah, I am choosing not to feel guilty about it and I'll get my groove back, I will. Anyway, I am both excited and completely nerve wracked that my Nigerian dwarf goats are going to be giving birth in the next two weeks. Uh, and I am very, excited but also i'm already feeling overwhelmed from that um but i know this is something that i wanted so i know that it was going to be work um, i'm prepared to do the work i'm just feeling overwhelmed already but yeah i just i've never experienced this before so um obviously i'm a little bit apprehensive about it but i think it's gonna go well um i hope it's gonna go well and we'll be having our own source of milk here pretty soon so that's exciting if anything, you guys from this video, just be kind to your body, be kind to your mind because this kind of thing happens to everybody. Even the happy preppy homesteaders that are always really super happy, it happens to them too. Um, it happens to everybody. So don't feel guilty. Um, just know that it will pass. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different than a lot of my videos, but we've been presenting a lot of videos that are different from my normal videos lately. So yeah, I hope that you still enjoyed it though. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.